Hello friends, welcome back to Soul Critical Automaton playing Dark Souls and uh, today I'm trying to finish this uh, extremely difficult Sen's Fortress. Why is it so difficult? Because there's giant axes. Giant axes are the uh, are the only natural enemy of um, of the Chosen Undead, strangely enough. No, there's lots of natural enemies. Um, it's been a few days since I last recorded because I have not been very well. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what I was talking about last episode. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I probably should watch back episodes before I do this sort of thing, but you know. That's the kind of thing I would do if I had, you know, professional diligence, but you know, screw it. These guys should be pretty easy to get headshots on, but it's surprisingly difficult. Oh, okay, lightning. Is that is that really what we're going for here? Lightning? That is not okay. Lightning is against the rules. It's against snake people rules at any rate. Um, yeah, so, this is probably just going to be me rambling today. No law speculation. Maybe a little bit of law speculation. Um, I do love the old law speculation. But mostly, I'm going to try and get to the top of this place. There's a few areas of the uh, of Sen's Fortress that I haven't gone to, because they are pretty difficult. Um, not more difficult than the game in general. You see there's an item down there that I haven't got? Yeah. There's, I think, two paths I haven't followed. One of which leads to a couple of items, and one of which basically involves dropping down to the very bottom of Sen's Fortress, where there is thick, sticky, gross mud, and uh, f no less than four titanite demons, and a whole bunch of, uh, of these fellows. Let's see if I can get them. Not quite. There we go. Headshots. The advantage to these things being um, primarily magic users is that they're really easy to stagger, and if you stagger them they can't cast spells. So, bye. Ooh, did it? Oh wow, nasty. Hanging by a head. No, I mean, wow, seriously, that's... Where's the ornoculars? God damn. Brutal. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, you might recognise this as the bit that killed me. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. <sighs> Fucking hell! Christ on a bike. Wow, okay. So, I did not die there. That was incredibly... Oh, this is the way I came. Um, whoopsie daisy. Uh, yeah, wow, okay. That was unbelievably lucky. Um, running the wrong way across these wasn't. Uh, so yeah, conveniently I've already killed all these guys because you saw me do that a minute ago. Uh, yeah, the Titanite place is not that difficult because there's lots of corners, easy to kite the demons around, but the real difficulty of it is that there is um, this thick sticky mud and it makes you walk really, really slowly. If we had the... Uh, the ring of, uh, you know, walking through thick... <laughs> okay. If we had the ring of walking through thick, gross, sticky mud, I would be happy to show that place off, but without that ring it's really, really difficult, so... Uh, yeah. I might do a roundup episode later on where I come back. I might not. It depends. Um, Anyway, we are past the really difficult bits of Sen's Fortress now. This is uh, where it gets a lot easier, strangely enough. Wow, look at that. Did you think it was a fancy mechanism? No, it's literally just a giant. That's what I love about this place. I love the juxtaposition of what is clearly extensively complicated mechanisms all... Uh, um, you know, which actually launch the the rocks and stuff, the boulders. But then you get up to the very top, and there's just there's just a giant putting them on the track to uh, to drop them down. It's uh, it's an amusing juxtaposition. 
Recognize these guys? It's been a while since we saw any Balder Knights. A lot of fire to kill this guy. Uh, I think there's another one down here. There he is. This one's got a rapier, so we've got to be careful. Actually, I think that's the Balder Side Sword, but that's a thrusting sword which behaves like a rapier, so... Don't die, that would be bad. So, uh, weirdly honourable, both of us taking a little break just to just to have some refreshing orange juice. That's that one dealt with. Uh, haha, a chest. Anyone who knows me knows that I really like big chests. Um, that's a joke. I actually quite like a variety of chest styles. Um, but no, treasure chests are fantastic, and. Yeah, treasure. Everyone likes treasure. Right, this bit's uh, this bit's a bit tricky, but broadly speaking, easier than uh, all of the other stuff we've been doing. That ring I picked up is uh, a fire resistance ring. It's going to be useful <laughs> for now. Stone plates, the symbol of a true knight, grant the strength to face various hardships. Yeah, uh, a big explosion. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Ow, shit. It can be really hard to judge whether it's... it's oh, fuck! <laughs> it can be really hard to judge whether it's about to um, hit or not. Run, 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 run. Um, yeah, you know, the stuff I talk about, like environmental signposting and stuff, these big black char marks on the floor are good because they show you where the uh, fire covers. This over here is, I think, the second Bereniki Knight in the game. There's only a couple of them. Which is interesting, because there's clearly a lot of love that's gone into their visual design. They're very they're very clearly distinct from the, uh... From the old, uh... The Black Knights. Seven. <laughs> they're also very tough. Wow! Okay. I... Maybe I should use the bonfire and then come back. There is... A bonfire. It's uh, a little bit of a pain to get to, but yeah, you back it up. Okay, we're, we're cool. Right, I'm gonna go run to that bonfire. Spread, spread, spread. Now, the bonfire in Sen's Fortress is really difficult to find if you don't already know it's there. Look at this. This is just brutal. How are you gonna spot that, huh? You have to be incredibly lucky to find it on your first try. Um, but, oh, that's nice. That's nice. I don't have to deal with those swinging axe blades again. Ah, lovely. And I've got just enough to level up as well. Fantastic. Uh, I'm not actually going to level up just yet, though. Do I have any good... Actually, I might attune... I might swap out Firewall for Poison Mist. Poisoning is very useful for fighting certain enemy types. Big, tough armor guys is one of them. In fact, in Dark Souls 2, I basically spent the entire game as a poison mancer. I got a good rapier earlier, earlier along, enchanted it to be poisonous, and then basically spent the entire game poisoning people with it. Very effective. I'm going to come back for these items in a minute once we've uh, dealt with Mr. Thinks It's Clever to throw fire around who was a very smug giant. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't even know if these guys are vulnerable to poison. Looks like they might not be. Let's try it backstab. Ah, no, it didn't work. Baroniki was a stupid king. You're a terrible bunch. Actually, I think Baroniki was their nation, not their king. Whoa. Hmm, I thought these guys had full plate, full face covering helmets, but I think you can actually see their faces. Unless that's uh, some kind of ebony mask or something. Still, I think we can uh, just just gently poke him until he dies, you know. 
There we go. Yeah, you can. He's got. A, it looks like he's got a hollow. Yeah, definitely a hollow face. But um, they shimmer out, which is interesting. This is. Uh, this fits in with my uh, shimmering. There is isn't there a ladder here. Oh, here it is. Ha. Uh, with my th shimmering theory, because the Berenike knights have become famous figures of legend, known the world over. So, but they died out long ago. So the only ones who are left are, you know, the undead ones who've become people of legend. This chap is, uh, he might look a lot like, um, Oscar of Astora, who helped us right back at the beginning of the game, but it is in fact not at all. He wears the same armor set, but he has different equipment. Actually, you know what, I'm just going to fireball him. Actually, I don't have fireball, did I? Boom. He's very agile for a heavily armored guy, which is interesting. And he, uses, he makes uh, full use of the, the rapier's moveset. Not least that backwards uh, that backwards leaping slash, which is extremely frustrating to fight against. I really don't want to die right now. Ah! Come on. There we go. Oh, shit. That was meant to be a heal. He basically plays like me, um, but more agilely. Come on. There we go, he's down. This guy has, I think, a 100% chance of dropping his rapier, Rickard's rapier, which has a little bit of an interesting uh, story attached to it. It's also quite an interesting weapon, generally speaking. It might be worth using for a bit. It has much better scaling than my current spear, although much less damage, naturally, because it's not lightning. A rapier with intri intricate decorations. Chosen weapon of the famous undead Prince Rickard. Rickard's exploits are told in a monomyth. He was born into royalty, but wandered the lands in a fateful, ill-conceived journey. He became undead and disappeared up north. So, yeah. Um, it's got a nice moveset. Thrusts. And that one does a multiple thrust. The heavy attack is, is a multiple thrust. And uh, does it... Uh, Yeah, if you do a double heavy attack, you get an extra bonus couple of thrusts, which is always good. Everyone likes boner thrusts. God, no, that was awful. In fact, lots of people don't like boner thrusts. And, you know, no one should be inflicted. With, um... Oh, I don't like where this is going. It's a nice view from up here. You can see all the way back over to uh, Andre's Tower there, and the, uh... The Undead Parish, and then the walls of the Undead Burg below. And this forest is Darkroot. And just over there, see that giant? That is the giant who opened the gate for us when he heard the second bell ring. So, yeah. I'm going to go back to the lightning uh, lightning thing for now, but I might upgrade Rickard's rapier in a bit. Um, it, actually is, it actually is possible to get to that giant, but I think to get to him we have to go through the um, the muddy under bit of uh, this place, so you know it's not really viable right now. Like I said, I need the uh, the iron ring to be able to do that safely. And I'm sure you don't guys don't want to see me die 15 times in a row again. You know, like Light Town was enough of that, I think. Run, 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 run! Ah! Uh. Chug, chug, chug. There we go. So, you actually can kill that giant, and it's um, <laughs> one of the few respawning giants in the game. He comes back, basically. Oh, that was close. Oh, I forgot that the, the other giant can throw things onto here. So, now, over here, we have another one of these guys, another Boulder Knight. And... All the knights are just a pain to fight, really. Come on. Let's have, let's have done with you. There we go. Took him down. So we're very near to the next boss. There's just a little bit of exploring to do here. Um, for some reason I always think there's a secret door here, but there never is. It just seems like the kind of place that would have a secret door. 
Another glimpse of that lovely view. It's also a good sniping spot for, uh... Mister thinks it's clever to drop big bombs on people. Actually, no, he's not the bomb guy, he's the other guy. Um... The boulder guy. There's no one bolder than a giant who... I don't know. That sounds like a proverb, but... Oh, yeah. I didn't... Did I find the cage key yet? Apparently not. There is a key around here somewhere for these cages, and it also unlocks the cage that Big Hat Logan is in. So, I'll uh, head back down to free Logan when I find it. But yeah, we're near to the area boss here, so once I've uh, killed the bomb giant, who does not respawn, I'll be um, exploring this area a little bit more fully, and then uh, humaning up to summon in some help for the boss. I think this is the only boulder knight with a crossbow in the game. Ah, here we are. That leads to the boss. And that is said boss. Big ol' fellow over there. I'll have some stuff to say about his area. Um, huh, wow, luder than intended. Uh, I'll have some stuff to say about the place he's staying in. Whoa! You know what I don't like? I don't like giants. Giants are dicks. Oh, wait. oh shit, he's in his... Yeah, okay, he's weak now. They do a... after a... They have a tantrum attack, basically, and then after their tantrum, they fall over for a bit. Because they're giants. Giants are rubbish. I've got some stuff to say about giants and humans, and what's the difference between a giant and a human, and so on. But I will probably save that for the next zone. Because, uh, it'll be a bit easier to talk about it there. This game is basically just entirely me putting sharp bits of metal in giant monsters' butts. This isn't even a backstab animation, but it's still, you know, sticking it right up there. Giants suck! I'm dead forever. Ow, fuck. You must have heard me. Uh, shit. Oh, you are joking. Well, um, since I'm gonna have to run back to uh, finish fighting him anyway, I guess I will um, enumerate a little bit. So, way back in uh, um, the opening cutscene, and when they talk about you know time and ancient mythology and all of that stuff, they talked about the um, people coming from the darkness to the flame to take their divinity. Um, by the way, there's a merchant over there, but I'm not going to go there until I've dealt with Mr. Giant Guy. And it also talks about the. Um, the giants having ruled. Not the giants, the dragons having ruled. But the exact chronology is more unstated. We can conclude, though, that, you know, before the fire, before the fire began a great cycle of um, existence and non-existence and so on, there was, uh, there was, you know, there were just stone trees and stone stone dragons, and that was it. That was the entirety of existence. There wasn't anything else. So, uh, oh, actually I should change my ring since I don't have to deal with fire anymore. Uh, blue tear stone. Good old blue tear stone. Ah, that was close. So, there's, it's possible to interpret it that there is a people of the gods, who are the giants, and a, uh, you know, people of the world, who are humans. But, uh, oh fuck, <laughs> I'm stuck. This isn't good. So, the, um, but the fact that is that someone's size is relative. It's relative to their 
mythic potential, their mythic um, significance. It's relative to um, various things. And it's not really clear how... Um, Oh wow, I've got really bad pins and needles. I've been sitting on my foot. Ah. So, um... The... Okay, so... It's, um... It says that, um... Gwyn and his folk made war on the dragons to wrest control of the world away from them. Um, and to end their tyranny. Now that could just be, you know, retroactive politicking by um, by the gods, but also it's entirely possible that what that means is that there was a time between. Is there anything over here? Oh, right, this is where um, where the summonable NPC is. There is a time between um, the coming of the Age of Fire and the uh, not coming of the Age of Fire, the coming of the Fire. And ugh. okay, I'm too floaty on this. I will definitely talk. I will definitely remember to talk about it next episode. But um, for now, I'll catch you later. Bye. <laughs>